Good morning all. I have securely mounted this um, power bank circuit board onto this set of lithium 18650s so that this is now my 5 volt, well it's not just 5 volt, it's 5 volt, 9 volt and 12 volt uh, power bank to play around with and I'm playing around with it and uh, at the moment I'm discharging it so that number should be going down. I want to get it to about 3.7 volts and that will enable me to add another block of four cells, which I might do sitting up so that it's a curious sort of L shape. That quite appeals to me. Now this board at the back, um, which still shows 8%, is no use. I'm going to take it off. Something's warm. Oh, it's this. Um, because it charges the cells to 4.33 volts. So it's pretty certainly designed for the high voltage lithium cells, which you can charge to 4.35 volts. So that will come off and I'll stick with this board. This board actually works very well. It uses the W332 chip on which I can find very little information, but I've been playing around with the button functions and I think I've got a handle on it. Um, the other thing is it's very well behaved in terms of cell voltages. It charges the cells to uh, 4.2 volts almost exactly and discharges them to 2.9 but 2.9 is fine because the moment it it stops discharging them they kind of recover a little bit and they come back up to sit at about 3 volts so it works absolutely brilliantly um, and it's got the PD power delivery both input and output on the USB type C socket so I wanted to test the functionality of this board and I was looking around for a USB-C uh, at both ends cable, power delivery uh, cable. And I was on Amazon and Amazon being Amazon, they said, why don't you buy this? And so I did. It's uh, this RAV power, power bank and it's PD power delivery. It's called the PD Pioneer something. I'll put the details in the description below. But it's just got two sockets, um, a type C PD socket and a type A. That does quick charge three, but the PD does 60 watts, which means that the voltages coming out of here are 5, 9, 12, 15 or, and or 20. And even at 20 volts, you've got three amps. So yeah, 60 watts out and 30 watts in. So that's what I'm playing with. I'm playing with that um, RAV power power bank connected to this. But then of course I thought, well, both these devices are bi-directional. So one can be the sender of charge and the other can be the receiver. Now at the moment, the RAV power is receiving charge and my little W332 board is sending it so that the voltage on the cells is coming down. And I was trying to establish how do you switch them over so that the other one is the sender and vice versa? And I couldn't really establish um, a technique for doing it. I was trying plugging the cable first into one and then into the other, but it just didn't seem to be very consistent. But I have found what appears to be an undocumented function on the RAV power. And that is that if you press and hold the switch for quite a long time, it appears to reboot itself. And the other thing which it does, and it does it seemingly very consistently, is that it switches mode. So it's now the sender. And you can see that my W332 board is receiving because we're getting a flashing indication of uh, state of charge. This set of LEDs has gone off because I think um, the idea is that it, when this is sending power, it doesn't want to waste it on the display you can turn that on temporarily to see that it's at two bars but yeah that consistently swaps over right I don't want to charge these I want to discharge them so I'm going to hold the button again and you can see the reboot on here oh that's very hot that inductor and the sudden change in direction on my meter so once again the RAV power is now receiving and the W332 is sending that's a really neat function because i can now use that rav power to either charge or discharge these homemade power banks and get the voltage to where i want it 
Now I can't find any other functions on this. I've tried double clicking, uh, single clicking at various points. It's only that press and hold for about eight seconds that seems to do the reboot. And there's a very similar function on this. If you press and hold it, it does a reboot, but it does all sorts of other things as well. So one of them, now I don't know whether you can see this, but um, actually I might bring the camera down. Yes, yeah, so you can see here, the, sh the color doesn't show it very well on the camera, but LED five there is a green LED uh, sitting right next to LED four, which is blue. In fact, these four are all blue. So they're showing state of charge, but the green one appears to show high voltage. So at the moment, this set of 18650s is being discharged at a high voltage. Now it might be uh, nine or it might be 12. It would make sense if it were 12. Um, I'm going to get an intercepting uh, voltmeter type thing, which can have uh, USB-C plugged into it so I can see the voltage, but I don't have one at the moment. It doesn't really matter. And if I press this button, the first thing that happens is that green LED goes off. And from now on, this thing is being discharged, uh, not at the high voltage, but at five volts. So it seems to turn off the high voltage function and there doesn't be, appear to be any way to get that back on. Pressing it again doesn't switch it back on. So that's one of the functions of that little switch. Right, I've just rebooted this thing because I wanted to get that um, little green LED back on. Now you can see that it's at about 3.8 volts. And if I press that button to turn off the high voltage, the first thing that happens is of course the cell voltages shoot back up a little bit because the transfer of uh, energy is now at a lower power rating because it's only happening at five volts. And I'm not sure what the current maximum at five volts on this board is, but um, it's still discharging, but it's at a lower power. So of course the voltage has shot up. Um, now the next function is I think double click and that appears, yes, that's actually temporarily switched this thing off because that's come up a bit further. Now, is it actually still discharging? Well, curiously, the RAV power thinks it is because it's flashing its LEDs to say, I'm receiving charge, but it can't be receiving much because this thing is ostensibly off. So I don't quite know what that mode is. Now, if I press the button again, this thing turns back on and energy is being sucked back out of these cells again because we can see the voltage going back down. Now there are a couple of other modes. Um, I've just got to try and remember how to invoke them and they're basically press and hold. So if I press and hold for a few seconds, now it doesn't show in that mode. Uh, maybe it'll show if I turn, if I turn the LEDs off. So, Press and hold for about five seconds. And the LEDs come back on, but then that happens if I just do a single press anyway. So there's a sort of five second reset, but there's another one. If you press and hold for more like about 10 seconds, quite a long wait, then you get a reset, which appears to be a complete and full reset. The green LED has come back on, so it's back in uh, high voltage and thus high power mode. It's still discharging, but curiously enough, when I did this a few moments ago off camera, it suddenly flipped state. And this was uh, receiving charge from the RAV power. And I'm not quite sure why that happened. So it's not entirely reliable, but it can reboot this circuit board to get the high voltage LED to come back on. That green LED is now back on sitting right adjacent to the blue one. And once again, I can press this a single press to turn the green LED off. The voltage lifts back up a bit because the power rating has dropped because the voltage being put over the USB cable has been brought down to five volts. So there are those functions. Um, single press, doesn't do anything in that instance. Double press seems to sort of shut this down into I don't know, some sort of low power state, but one that appears to still be charging this power bank. Maybe it's just the tiniest little trickle of current, but this thing sees it as something and just keeps going. 
I don't know. Then there's the sort of five second reboot, which I can't be entirely sure what that does. And then there's this 10 second reboot. Press and hold for a good length of time. And you get what appears to be an almost full reboot. And that brings back on the green LED and thus the high voltage. That's either gone up to nine or gone up to 12. Can't be sure which, because at the moment I can't intercept this USB-C cable. So those appear to be the functions of the button on the W332 chip. Now, like I say, I can't find a data sheet for this chip. Uh, if anyone knows where one is, that would be great if you could let me know and I'll put that uh, link to it in the description below this video. So I was looking on the internet trying to find information on how to sort of flip the direction of power delivery, but there's really nothing because I suppose it's not a conventional arrangement to connect uh, a bi-directional device to a bi-directional device. I mean, normally you'd be connecting your bi-directional device, your power bank, to some sort of uh, PD socket on a power plug like that. Um, or of course the other use case is um, you might connect it to one of these PD trigger boards, but these are receive only. That's not gonna have a send function. So it's only this case where you've got two power banks essentially, which are PD compatible, where you've got this um, not being entirely sure which direction it's going in. But because this RAV power does have this reasonably consistent uh, change of direction thing. So I reboot that. The direction immediately changes. This thing's climbing up. It's happening at um, one of the higher voltages. Now, of course, I don't know what the voltages um, are for input on this. It may only be 9 volts. It may not actually take 12 volts as an input. It may produce 12 volts as an output. I honestly don't know. This set of LEDs has gone off. So that's definitely going from the RAV power to that. And if I do it again, there's about eight seconds on here. I think it's not quite as long as the 10 seconds on there. That seems to have flipped direction again. This is flashing. So this is receiving power, energy, charge. And this once again is sending. Right, just to finish this off, let's have a quick look at this um, PD trigger, which is the ZY12 PDN. First of all, let's unplug this from the RAV power and connect the PD trigger to this. Now I'm not gonna go through all the functions because I'll do a video on this thing separately, but I know that red is five volts. If I press the button, I can coax nine volts out of it and you can see that the little uh, green LED has come on and that's gone to a red and green, so yellow, I guess press it again, it's gone to green only. And I'm pretty certain that's 12 volts. The green LED is still on, 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 on this board. So I think this has five, nine and 12 as outputs. If I press this again, oh, that's gone off. Yes, it's all gone off because it's uh, this is not drawing enough uh, power. And this thing is saying there's no load. So it's switched off. So five, nine, 12 and back to five. So this has got three output voltages. Now the RAV power um, is pretty good because it's 60 watts output. And I'm pretty certain this does all five output voltages. Let's give that a try. So I'm gonna plug this into the PD port. So we've got red, that's five volts. Uh, red and green together, sort of yellow, that's nine volts. Green is 12 volts. Now we get two additional colors. That's green and blue together, so teal. So that must be 15 volts. And that's blue on its own, it's hard to see. But that presumably is 20 volts. I mean, I could confirm that by connecting my meter to uh, this thing. So let's go through them. That is 5.2 volts. That is nine point something. 12.1, uh, just under 15 volts, and blue is 20 volts. So this thing certainly uh, cycles through all five 
output voltages. So that is um, undocumented button functions for the RAV power. Also the button functions that I can find for the W332 chip board. But I also bought this um, SW6106, I think it is. Yeah, SW6106 board, which also has a button uh, there. And it may, who knows, have other functions. Uh, I've just noticed actually that the B plus and the B minus are this, a similar pitch across there to this one and the same way around. So that should be a relatively quick switch out. Uh, yeah, then I've got to check all the functions on there as well. What fun. Cheerio.